Today we're going to be doing something a little different, but simple. We're going to be replacing the fuse in the controller ports on the Sega Dreamcast. They have a tendency to blow out sometimes and cause your entire Dreamcast to essentially not function because the controller ports don't work, you can't do anything. So, um, basically all you have to do is get a new fuse. Um, they're extremely cheap. You can find them on eBay. You can find them on Amazon. And um, this is actually a self-healing fuse. So if your controller ports go out and the fuse blows, you can just unplug it for a minute and replug it back in. And your Dreamcast controller ports will be functioning again. So basically, you just have to zip out the four screws. You have one here, 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 and then one under the modem that you just pop off. So I've already unscrewed those just to save time. So no one's got to sit there and watch. Um, uh, there's a ribbon cable you have to remove. Just gently lift it out here. Very simple. You have a cable for your fan that will very easily slide right out. Just be very careful when you're pulling all the stuff out and you don't have to worry about damaging anything. And I will go ahead and zip these screws out. I'll cut that out because I don't think everybody needs to sit and watch that. But as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, and then this will just lift right out. And then we'll go from there. So then once you've got the board out here, um, you can see, if I can get this up in the camera a little bit. Where's my light? You can see the fuse right on F1 there. Right on F1 there. The little blue one there. Not the capacitor. There, right there. So you're going to remove that. And put the new one in. Now I've also replaced the battery here with a battery mod. Um, so I can replace the battery easier when it dies. Um, Sometimes when you go on eBay, you can buy a whole kit here. It won't just have the fuse, but it'll have the fuse. It'll have a new capacitor here. It'll have a diode. And it'll have a battery holder. So you can do everything if you want to swap out all your parts on the board with new stuff. Which isn't really necessary, but if you want an easier way to change the battery, the standard battery is soldered in. And... It eventually ends up dying. It's a rechargeable battery, but it ends up dying. And especially after 20 years, most of them have gone bad. So you can uh, put a new battery holder in there as well as a uh, new capacitor. So you can get those as a kit for like 10 bucks, 15 bucks on eBay, I think. But I've already done those. So I just got the resettable fuse there. And then all you have to do is take your old fuse out and drop the new one in. Now there's a couple ways you can do that. You can get a, your soldering iron and you can simply melt the solder here and slide your old one out. Or if you have a desoldering gun, you can easily desolder those two points. Or, or if you have a little manual solder sucker, you can use that as well. And then this thing will just drop right out. Um, but I have a desoldering gun, so... I'm just going to go ahead and pop this out real quick. And that'll drop right out of there.
And that should be loose enough to fall right out if I can see what I'm doing here. So, there's the old one. I don't know how good of a look you can get there, but you can see the old one just fine and it fell right out. So then I ordered five new ones. It was it was either three dollars, I think, for one of them on eBay, or six six ish dollars for five of them. So I thought, well, may as well get six of them for the price. And just have extras. I do have several dream casts, so we might wanna might want to do those just for the hell of it down the road. And this thing will just slide right in here. And then you've got yourself a resettable fuse in here. Which is fantastic. There's lots of people who've done tutorials of these online. I'm certainly not the first and won't be the last, but I thought, well, Easy, interesting, fun video to make, so why not make one? And there's a lot of videos out there of people doing the capacitor on here and the battery mod. It's all pretty much the same thing. You're, you're desoldering the capacitor and desoldering the old battery. Um, just like, just like I'm doing this resettable fuse here. And you can put a little flux on there, certainly not necessary if you've got a rosin-based flux, but which I do, but I have flux, so may as well use it. And then we just solder in the new legs here. And we're all set there. So as you can see, well, let me get my light here so you can actually see what's going on here. And you can see the new one in there right there, the little brown, the little brown fuse in there, the little chiclet. So now, and you can see it soldered under there, I'll just have to clip the legs off. But now if my one of my controllers ever does anything goofy and uh, trips the fuse there you simply have to unplug your console for 30 seconds and it will reset itself and you'll be back to playing honestly one of the easiest mods you can do and totally worth it. Um, just because then you're not, you know, if your controllers go out and that fuse blows, well, then you're screwed until you get a new fuse. So, very worth it, very cheap. And you can even do that with a, a little $5 hobby soldering iron. You know, you might not have the best soldering job in there, but Really, all you got to do is get it soldered in there well enough to stay, and then you've got your fuse in there. So, not a bad little upgrade to add. And then once you're finished, button everything back up, four screws back in, and you are all set. And you are ready for years and years of gaming with no worry about your controllers or your system conking out again. And that's all for today, so thank you.